Okay, we're going to talk about something that affects our everyday lives. The interwebs. The internet. Not the interwebs. Don't write that in the paper. I just said that. So, let's have a look and see what is this thing that is a global phenomenon. Something that you've grown up with, but I was there when we didn't have it. We didn't have it. That's how old I am. Alright, check this out. So, what is the internet? If somebody had to ask you the question, what is the internet? This is where a lot of people get confused between the internet and the World Wide Web. And the World Wide Web is another video altogether. But let's talk about the internet. The internet is basically billions of devices, billions of them, all connected to a global network communicating and sharing data. That's what the internet is. It's a massive network of computers made up of all kinds of devices, all connected, communicating, sharing information the whole time, non-stop. It's a physical network, guys. It's not just something that's the cloud. I know we talk about the cloud, but this is what the actual cloud is. Okay, let me show you what it means. Have a look at this picture. This picture represents all the undersea cables that are connecting all of the countries around the world to various servers located around the globe. So have a look, we have cables everywhere. And if you'd like to know more about this, here is a very, very cool website to check out, submarinecablemap.com. Go check it out. There's a QR code, you can scan it and go straight there. This will give you a, you can zoom in and zoom out. This will show you all the cables, where they are, and how every country is connected via these undersea cables. It is something amazing to look at. Satellites make up the physical network. We have uh, wave, radio waves, satellite waves going up to the satellites and back down again to various servers, LTE, 4G, 5G, networks these are 5g towers going up everywhere at the moment one of the most popular and becoming a lot more common nowadays is fiber optic cables and this is using pulses of light to transmit data at the speed of light it's super cool super fast way better than a typical wired copper network or even ADSL cables as well so let's have a look and see how this works okay we're talking about the internet not the World Wide Web. That's you. You most likely are connected to a router of some kind. The router is then connected to your ISP via various cabling, okay, via a fiber line or an ADSL line. Your ISP has a really nice big server, okay, K or a whole bunch of them, capable of handling a lot of network traffic, and they are connected to what's called the backbone connection. The backbone connection is made up of all the servers and main connection points around the world called the internet. All right, so that's that's the, the line of communication. So that's you, the network. So we've got all these different devices, all these different devices, all connecting to the internet, wanting to go somewhere. And how do we go somewhere? Well, we open up our browser and we go HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. What is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash? Well, HTTP means Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Hypertext Transfer Protocol. That is the language that computers need to be able to speak to each other. That's what it is. Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And www simply means World Wide Web. Right, we're still not talking about the World Wide Web yet. This is the internet. So let's see, what do I mean? Every single device that is connected to the internet, whether it's your phone, your watch, your computer, your tablet, your um, Garmin, SatNav, anything that you have, there is a network connection. And because you are connected to this massive global network, you have what's called an IP address. An IP address looks something like this. 169.1.235.51. Okay, so to us that means absolutely nothing. But to computers, that is the actual unique address for that device, for or a device. Let me explain it. What does IP stand for? IP stands for Internet Protocol. 
That's what IP stands for. Now, as you can see, each one of these devices at the top of the screen have their own unique IP address. You can't have two things with the same IP address. Okay, so every single device that makes a connection is given an IP address, either by a router or a server of some kind. So that means you're actually never really anonymous or as private as you think you are. If you want to find out for yourself, go and have a look at whatismyip.com. Okay, go give it a try. I went and typed in whatismyip.com into my web browser, and this is what came up. So my public IP is, and that's my computer's connection to the internet. There it is over there. That's what it is. Uh, do not use this. In fact, I think I'm going to just blur out one of the numbers so you don't use it, just in case. <laughs> so there you go. Whatismyip.com. Computers use IP addresses because they understand numbers. If we said to a computer google.com, it actually doesn't look up google.com. It actually looks up an IP address or a, a number, a range of numbers. And if you had to translate these numbers from google.com, apple.com, microsoft.com, they would look like this. Those are the actual IP addresses of those websites. Google, Apple, Microsoft, News24. Oh, and um, there's a good one over there you should go check out sometime. As you can see, so if I went to google.com, the computer is actually going to 216.58.205.238. So that's actually google.com. So although we as humans type in letters, because that's how we read words, the computer's using numbers, IP addresses. So let's sum this up. We have this massive, massive planet that we're living on, surrounded by very, very powerful computers, all connected by lines, cables, satellites, LTE, cellular networks, everything is connected, and every device that connects to this network is given an IP address of some kind.